Hello and welcome to the Cabinet of Creations, where you will find horror, horror, beauty and the perfectly imperfect. imperfect. Here we start off as usual by putting the doll's head in boiling water. Be careful of this bit, it's hot hot hot. And then this loosens the glue that holds in the hair. So then you can get, a, well I like to use a flat head screwdriver and just scrape away inside. You can see here the hairs, the hair plugs are being pulled out. And then get some tweezers and then pull out all the gooey bits of gluey hair. And then get 100% acetone and you can easily remove the factory makeup. With the hair, just in case you might tend to see the scalp, I always like to go over the scalp with paint the same colour as the hair. As I mentioned in all my videos, I don't actually use some patterns or templates for clothes. I literally wing it. <laughs> Turns out fine. As always, first spray with Mr. Super Clear if you're going on to bare plastic as it just helps things grip, especially pastels. And again, can we just take a second just appreciate these wonderful, pristine, clean gloves that have been with me since the start. Yes, they are washed and they are clean, but they're very, very stained, which I suppose goes to show the durability of the products that I use. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing they're filthy, filthy clean. I use tacky glue to stick the hair onto the scalp. Although it looks white at the moment, it does actually dry clear. time for her face up so as you can see I've done the foundation of the white powder and then just going in with the details for a clown's makeup I'm using watercolor pencils Derwent ink tents to be precise and pan pastels as usual although this doesn't really pick up on camera I can actually see it quite well in real life it's a very sort of I guess you'd say light sketch just to make sure things are where I want it. I could always wet it and rub it off if I didn't like it anyway because I've already got the couple of layers of Mr Super Clear so it'll protect any work that's underneath. Which will come in very handy a little bit later as you'll see. I'll be quiet now for a minute or two just so you can enjoy the face up progression.
and this is why using Mr. Super Clear comes in very handy. I didn't actually like the way the line went down on this, so I just wet a little bit of a tissue and wiped it off. Really, really easy. If you hadn't done Mr. Super Clear, then it would have took off all of the um, pasta work and probably some of the eye as well. And we'd have to have took it all off and probably began again. Oh, so thank you, Mr. Super Clear. I wanted her boot to be kind of folded, rounded, curved. I had to do it with a little bit of paper first um, so I wasn't to waste any warbler. You only need to heat warbler up for, I don't know, about 30 seconds. You'll see as it starts to flap around a little bit like a, a fish tail um, when it's ready to be pliable and moulded and bent and creased and done whatever you want to do to it. In this case, a, a shoe. So this little bit of paper that you just seen a moment ago is what I used just so I knew where the creases would be. I'll never use this again for another shoe. I would literally would prefer to actually draw around the foot of the next doll and do a whole new template. I literally want these to be one of a kind. As I say, the shoes may look similar sometimes. There's only so many options I guess you can do with clown feet, uh, with clown shoes rather. Um, but yeah, I, I do like to make it difficult for myself and do new things each time, whether that's using a template or guesswork, winging it, um, or what. So one of a kind definitely and if you don't quite have time to do any of the bends or folds or shapes that you want you just simply reheat it with the hairdryer and it can be molded again and reshaped now when it's fully cooled down I go in with matte acrylic paint and start fancying up the boots So I look to go in with the pastels again just to give the boot an aged look as you'll see in just a moment the difference between an aged boot and the freshly painted one I, I personally just think the aged one looks just lovely compared to the one on the right more characterful I guess you can say and now this is why the doll has cross eyes because she's basically looking up at her nose at these three balls that are balancing on it these are made with super scorpy baked in the oven for about 20 minutes they're actually quite easy to drill through actually pushed a, a needle through or pin through um, these three so it can go onto her nose now I painted it with a mix of acrylics and Promarker pens and of course pastels for ageing Now the finishing touches which is what everybody seems to love doing and I can just see why here I am putting some white highlights in her eyes it just something so flat becomes just so dimensional now I think especially when you're going with the varnish I love doing this love it video upload she's actually available for adoption in my Etsy shop cabinet of creations UK if she's already been snapped up then I'm sure there's might be some others there you might quite like or to save it as favorites so that any new items that get uploaded into my shop you could be the first to see I'd just like to draw your attention to the wooden plinth that my dolls and other creations are on this one oh, they're just all so beautiful so beautifully finished absolutely gorgeous the supplier that i actually get them from is in the process of giving me his details that he would like me to share on my youtube and social 
um, for, especially for any of, the, of the you that are in the UK that need to buy plinths. I know it can be quite hard and expensive, but these are just really reasonable, such good quality, different finishes. Uh, as I say, he's just working on his various items, and when it's all done, I'll put it in the description when I have it in the future videos. And here she is, final photos of Judy, the extraordinary balancing clown. Enjoy. Thank you. 